Hello, lads. It is I, Freeze 700. We are back with some Warhammer 40k lore. This time, we are doing the Knights of Blood. That is right. Knights of Blood. Who the fuck are they? So, the Knights of Blood are a very interesting Space Marine chapter because they are classified as renegades. But, according to a lot of other people, they're considered loyalists. So, there's a bit of a conflict there as to which are they actually going to be renegades or loyalists well we're gonna get down to it so first off their color scheme it is not red and white it is instead a dark red with silver that is right silver is the color of choice for this chapter the reason why is because it looks nice when your armor's all glistening and shiny as blood splatters across it hell yeah their chapter symbol is very complicated, I would say, because it's got like three different fucking things going on there. We got a white shield with a blood drop on it and two black swords crossed behind it. It's kind of something I wouldn't recommend for a beginner to draw. But that's just my opinion, I guess. We don't give a fuck about my opinion. So, let's get on with the lore. What is it about these guys that makes them so fucking badass, right? Let's let's wet our lips a little bit here. Let's get a little thirsty. Hmm, big hint there. Oof. First up, I would like to say this. They are sons of Sanguinius. So this is going to be kind of like the main lore gist of them, is that being the sons of Sanguinius, you're kind of automatically in the ship basket as far as genetics go. Their gene seed is absolutely fucked by the Emperor's fuckstick, so, there is going to be a lot of issues here with this chapter. Now, if you're wondering, like, when were they founded, that's an issue, too, because there's not an exact day that they gave us. So, it's just said that they're a later founding. This could be, like, 37k. This could be, like, 35k. Who knows? This could be just sometime later, basically. Now, this is actually worse than what you originally would be thinking. Because you would think, okay, so they're later founding chapter. That means that, you know, the tech priest could have probably worked out some of the kinks in the, you know, gene seed that the Blood Angels have. Maybe work out some of that red thirst, uh, that black rage, all that fun stuff, right? Wrong. Instead, it is actually worse. Way worse. It is phenomenally worse. Like, imagine for a second you have a really, really, really bad batch of alcohol, and yet you decide to let it ferment for a bit, and you kind of, like, see where, like, the top layer of the alcohol is, like, really good, so you scrape that off, and you keep that for yourself. That's essentially what the Blood Angels did. But where the Knights of Blood come in is they're the bottom of the barrel. So they are basically getting the worst iterations of the Black Rage and the Red Thirst. And it is pretty scary. Because it used to be the Black Rage and the Red Thirst. It would mildly hinder someone who is in combat. Like all of a sudden they get a craving for blood. And they may lick a blade or they may uh, get really, really pissed and punch their fist through an orc's nose. But these guys got it in a new way. They got it in a much worse form. If anything, it's actually really interesting is that... Their whole chapter is essentially borderline losing their minds. And it actually created some very interesting mutations, I would say, in their skin. Like, the one time we do see them without their helmets and stuff on, their skin has been noted to be reddish. And this is, of course, because when a space marine eats flesh, and when a space marine is suffering from mutations of their gene seed, they tend to be very adversely affected. Sometimes they take on traits due to the flesh that they're eating. They also take on traits due to their gene seed, like the salamanders. Salamanders get extremely black when they get their gene seed. These guys, they get extremely red, almost like I would say Darth Maul red, but they would also have large serrated teeth, kind of like demons. So it's like, hmm, they really are designed to eat people's blood, essentially. Interestingly enough, though, their chapter has had very little conflict with the Imperium at large because they purposely set themselves up in every battle, in every war zone, to be away from their allies. 
So they'll help you out. They just won't help out with the main engagement. That's not their thing. The reason why is because they will kill other people. This actually led to a lot of issues with the flesh terrors and the other sons of Sanguinius. Where what would happen is the Blood Angels would try their best to not kill a civilian. The Knights of Blood, on the other hand, would just not give a fuck. They viewed civilians as basically food. So in other words, it's not uncommon for a Knights of Blood to just randomly rip out the throat of a nearby Imperial Guardsman and just drink it. Just because he felt a little parched. He's like, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna turn this Imperial Guardsman into the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah! And just rip his fucking skull off. So, that is obviously a very big issue. Especially since the Blood Angels are a little bit more hesitant about drinking people's blood. They are very, very, I would say, quiet and discreet about their issues. Not these guys, though. The, they know that it will spell their chapter doom if they kept fucking with Imperial Guardsmen forces and they kept fucking their allies. So they are smart enough in that regard to never join the main set of conflict. But even then, if they're not in the main conflict, if you're not in the main battle, you're still going to have some PDF forces. You're still going to have some Imperial Guard regiments that are near you just as support. And, of course, there will be these incidences that will happen. And because of their obvious appearance, and because of the issues that have happened, the Inquisition has obviously stated them as renegade. But, this is a big but, it seems that the Space Marines themselves do not listen to that renegade status. Which is very fucking odd, because if it was any other chapter that was declared renegade, I bet you're fucking ass that the Black Templars would be up there and just purging the motherfucking shit out of them. But hey, also, you know, Grey Knights coming out of the blue, fucking mind blasting everybody and just doing a whole exterminatus. But you know, these guys get a pass. So besides that, they've been actually pretty active in the Jericho Reach, but it's not confirmed. Just, you know, really, really, really bad camera footages of somewhat knights of blood looking dudes they were also part of the devastation of ball which would actually bring me to my next topic so as far as this chapter's status are they alive are they dead are they loyalist this is where i would say they could actually be considered loyalist not renegade despite the inquisition status of them the reason why is because in the invasion of ball also known as the devastation of ball where tyranids and fucking demons attacked ball this chapter did something very valiant. They actually did something that was really awesome. So they decided to answer the call. They came along with all the other Blood Angel successors to Ball to protect it and to aid in battle. This obviously sparked a bit of conflict because the Flesh Terrors, despite being almost exactly the same as Knights of Blood, didn't like them for a lot of reasons. So because of this, it was kind of odd that these two were put together to join forces in a very specific part of the devastation of Ball. But this is where they redeem themselves. See, when Cobb and Ha, I may have mispronounced that name, but he's just a massive fucking bloodthirster, Cobb and Ha. That's the way I pronounce him. When he came in, his rage that infested the fucking planet pretty much drove all the knights of blood into the black rage and the red thirst there was no question about it the flash terrors on the other hand they still had a few of their members who didn't give in to that that being said their chapter master of the knights of blood said hey my chapter's fucked you get out of here and you go help the rest of the angels we're gonna go ahead and tell corn that he can go suck our dicks because no one's madder than us Q Doom music. Rip and tear, baby. All of them just charge straight in to Cobb and Da's forces and High Fleet Leviathan's forces and made a valiant suicide charge that actually did a pretty damn good job. Now, the reason why they did a pretty damn good job is because when you're infected with the Black Rage and the Red Thirst, what happens is you become extremely powerful by Space Marine standards. So, when you have this guy who's fuck-ass mad... 
and you have a demon who is fuck ass mad, well, the demon's gonna get fucked because this guy is madder. So he's just gonna rip right through that warp shit like no tomorrow. And then when you got the Tyranids, well, you can't really genetically modify yourself to face against feel wings. So yeah, they kind of got fucked by these really, really pissed dudes. That being said, though, how would they fight if they weren't extinct, essentially? Due to their valiant contributions to Devastation of Ball, the Angels of Sanguinius consider them loyalists. That's the lore conflict. But how would they fight is the question. Well, they apparently do have some vehicles, but those vehicles are usually abandoned. The reason why is, as we stated before, they get fuck ass mad. They are the types of guys who will go doom guy on somebody. They're the types of dudes who will hold the, the trigger of their bolter, despite the fact that they ran out of ammunition, and just break the fucking hill because they're so mad that they're just going to rip their gun apart and break whatever shards are left of their bolter into your face because you made them that mad. These are the types of guys they are. So because of that, their battle tactics tend to be a heavy assault. They tend to just charge in with power fists, chain swords, power swords, jet packs, anything to close the gap and just gut your ass. The problem is, of course, is that Imperial Guardsmen forces do not like this kind of combat. So what happens is, is that if they're being, per se, held off, like a Tau has a really heavy firing line so they just can't get through, this is where I mean by they will start feasting on their allies. This, of course, is a very big issue for the Allies. Not a big issue for Imperium Logistics, because there's just millions of Imperial Guardsmen. So, hey, go ahead, eat one or two. We're totally fine. Honestly, you could probably eat like 100 of these guys, and we'd still be fine as far as logistics are concerned. But, as far as like morale goes, this is kind of a big issue. So, if anything, if I was to ever do like a tabletop for them... I would definitely give them the animosity that orcs tend to have, where there's a chance at the start of every turn that they would friendly fire and kill somebody. I would definitely put that in there. So besides that, this has been my lore of Knights of Blood. They're very interesting. I would say that they're more Marines Malevolent-ish when it comes to their view of civilians. And I love it on how they know that what they're doing is wrong, because they're trying to avoid it as much as possible. But on the flip side, when it happens, they really don't give a fuck. Because they view people as food. They don't view people as people. So I find that very interesting indeed. And I also find it interesting that they still retain some nobility in their minds. Like they're willing to still sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Not to be all Taoish or anything. So besides that, this has been Free 700. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys think. I would love to hear what you guys are thinking in those delicious, juicy minds. The next video, I think, is going to be a hentai review. Because it's time to get Slanexy. All this rage. We got to blow our load somehow, boys. We got to kill this rage off somehow. And seeing as how it's not deemed acceptable in American society to just kill people for no reason... I think it's good to do a hentai review so that way we can blow off some steam. So, see you guys next time.